Hey my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome to my kitchen here in Stockholm, Sweden. Today we are making Tosca Kaka. No one really knows where the name Tosca Kaka comes from. You can find it in cookbooks like as far back as like the 1930s-ish, at least according to Google. And there's a bunch of theories about where the name Tosca comes from. I always kind of assumed it was Tosca as in like Tuscan, as in like from Tuscany. Wikipedia disagrees with me and says that potentially it comes from Tosca like the opera or even like a Spanish word, which I think means like uh, rough or uneven. Again, according to Wikipedia, I don't know. Regardless, if you see something in Sweden that says Tosca something, so Tosca Kaka, which would be like a Tosca cake or Tosca bullar, which is like Tosca buns, that means that it's going to have this Tosca topping. Take a shot for every single time I have said Tosca now in this video. So what the Tosca is, is nuts, usually almonds, that have been incorporated into this like caramely sauce. This Tosca topping can be on basically any type of cake, but I have put it on top of a gluten-free almond cake. It's kind of one of those accidentally gluten-free recipes. There's no replacement flour, it's just marzipan, egg, and butter, and let me tell you, it is freaking delicious. So anyways, that's the story on this cake. It's traditional, it's delicious, you're gonna love it. Let's go make it. Tosca topping. Into a pot, pour 100 grams of cream, 100 grams of sugar, 100 grams of honey, and 100 grams of butter. Place on the stove over medium heat. Stir occasionally as it comes to a boil. Boil until it is between 107 and 110 degrees Celsius or has turned a light golden brown color. When it's ready, turn off the heat and throw in 100 grams of toasted hazelnuts, 100 grams of toasted and salted almonds, 50 grams of toasted walnuts, and 50 grams of toasted pumpkin seeds. Stir until they are completely coated in the sauce. You can really use any nuts and seeds here as long as it totals around 300 grams. This is just a combination that I like. Pour into a bowl or a container and let sit out at room temperature to cool until we make the cake. Almond cake. Oil a 19 by 26 centimeter pan. You could also use a 23 centimeter round pan. Line the pan with parchment and then oil again. I don't have spray fat, so I just brush a neutral oil on. Grate 300 grams of almond paste. This step isn't necessary if you're using a stand mixer, but if you're mixing by hand like me, don't skip this step. Into a bowl, place all of your almond paste and start adding the 150 grams of butter one tablespoon at a time. It is very important to add the butter slowly. If you add it all at once, the almond paste will get slick with grease and you'll have lumps and chunks of almond paste in your batter that will be almost impossible to get out. Trust me, I've been there. Really make sure all the butter is incorporated before adding any more. As the butter gets incorporated, the mixture will become looser and looser and the butter will go in easier. Next is the eggs. Once again, add them one at a time and mix. After every addition, this will get easier as the batter loosens. This recipe calls for 180 grams of eggs, which for me is sometimes four eggs and sometimes five, depending on the size. It's better to have a little bit more egg in the batter than too little. Once everything is thoroughly combined, add a pinch of salt, a couple drops of almond extract, and a splash of vanilla extract. The extracts are optional, but help make the cake even more delicious. Pour the cake batter into the pan and smooth out on top. Pop into a 190 degrees Celsius oven until golden brown and no longer jiggly in the center. About 15 to 20 minutes. All done, looking gorgeous, and I also know it's done because when I jiggle it, it's like set. You will see immediately it's no longer liquid. Now we just need to let this cool before we put the topping on. This has been sitting here for about 10 minutes, and it's definitely cool enough, so we're gonna go for it. You're gonna want a tray, mine has seen better days, as well as a piece of parchment or a sill pat, either one of those is gonna work. Take our guy, and we want to flip this upside down. We have here our cooled down Tosca. It's gonna make sure the syrup likes to settle on the bottom and the nuts kind of like to float. So just give it a quick stir. And then we're gonna put some on top here. You just wanna make it as even as possible and be a little careful because the cake underneath is a little bit on the fragile side. So don't like, you know, that's why I'm kind of, I'm moving them gingerly. 
gorgeous. Now, some of this might fall off on top when we rebake it, it doesn't really matter. And into the oven, this goes yet again. This is genuinely so beautiful and I'm so excited about it. As I said, like it has some of the syrup from the Tosca has kind of run down the sides. Now, as I flip this upside down and put the Tosca on top of it, I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm doing this because this is what I've done in a bakery situation. And then I was like, why didn't I just keep it right side up and put the Tosca on top of it and bake that off? And I don't have an answer for you. You can do that. <laughs> and then you would get a lot more syrup like in the cake as opposed to like, I'm gonna lose a good amount of this syrup, which isn't the end of the world, but also like I could have just left it in the container. Cause I was also thinking about like, this looks really beautiful, but if I want to transfer it to a plate, I got to think about that one. In any case, I got to let this cool. It's like screaming hot right now. So we're going to let this cool. I'm going to think about it and I'm going to get back to you on how I'm going to fix that. So this guy, is fully cool now. And this is the only rectangular plate that I have. I'm also a little concerned about it because this has like, it maybe is hard to see, but this has like fairly slopey edges. It's definitely not flat, but it's the best thing that I have for this. Okay, I have several ideas here. First of all, how stuck to here are you? Shwonk. Well, that at least went well. I just don't think that I can like, lift it, you know? Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Woo. I mean, it's not super straight, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> I love it when things work out for me. All right, the time has come. It's tasting time. Pastry knife as per usual. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Mm. I love hazelnuts. Dude, this is really good. And it's hard to describe to you guys like how moist and delicious this cake is. It's sweet though. I mean, it's literally dripping in a caramel sauce. Like, yeah, it's sweet. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this week's video, then please like, comment, subscribe, all the things you guys already know. And I hope that you have a great week and then I'll see you around next week. Miroa.